everyone. So today we have Dunya and Alex. How are you guys today? Doing very good. We're doing good. Yeah. All right. So I I've seen some of your photos. You guys have done amazing on this way of eating. So I just wanted to know what was you, what was your diet before like before carnivore? Um, our diet was what I would consider a, a, a healthier America and that standard diet. So we were not uh, in our house. We were not uh, buying pre-made dinners and stuff like that. Mostly was a homemade cook. Uh, most most uh, were homemade cooked meals. So uh, generally no junk food here and there. I know that Alex loved to eat chips and stuff like that. I was never into into that. So, but if it was in front of me, definitely I would I would take it. So. Uh, but as I said, mostly, mostly homemade cooked meals. Uh, what I believe that it was a balanced uh, meal, both meat, veggies, uh, uh, fruits. So that was that was about it. So when we started experiencing our health issues, we it was hard to believe that uh, food might be the main cause for it. So yeah, yeah, especially because it sounds like you were eating pretty well. Yeah, I would, I would say so, yes. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. always a, a few things that you always throw in the mix. I mean, you know, your grains, you know, eating breads, you know, stuff like that, pizzas, you know, every now and then, uh, eating a lot of, you know, health, you know, nuts, you know, pistachios, almonds, and, you know, thinking that that's all good and healthy for you, but come to find out later, not so much. Yeah, no, I was I was pretty much the same. Yeah, it it is. No, I was pretty much the same. Um, so I I definitely relate to you guys on that one. Yeah, yeah. So when it came to um, implementing the diet, like how did you guys do that, and where did you hear about the carnivore? I'm curious to find out. Uh, because of the health issues, we were prior to carnivore diet and the keto diet. So, and the keto diet was getting uh, restrictive almost with every year. You know, first we, I, I had, I was dealing with the thyroid issues, so I decided to, to remove the gluten. So first, the focus was on no gluten, no like the standard uh, foods that are listed on a on a on a like a thyroid to improve the thyroid diet. So it was no nightshades, uh, of course, no sugars. Uh, there were other some as well, other things as well. So once when I stripped it down, I, I felt much better. So, but then we continued to, to learn and read, you know, and then you start finding, we were starting finding out about the anti-nutrients in the food and then starting slowly removing one thing after another. So our keto diet was 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 uh, well stripped for, from so many things, and then um, Alex did not get rid of his, the the pain in his joints. So that was becoming instead of getting like he almost peak how felt he he felt, and then all of a yeah. sudden starting going downhill, and he was like something just it's not right, you know. So. The more cleaner that I'm eating, the more fresh uh, salads and spinach and stuff like that. It's just uh, uh, it, it's something off. So he was the first one who, who started complaining about on a good diet, you know, feeling practically worse than better. And then through some podcasts uh, between some retired doctors, uh, we found out about the carnivore one was experiencing the same joint pains as Alex. I forward him the thing and I was like, just watch, listen to this. He sounds like you. And then that was kind of the starting point. That's when we heard about the carnivore for the first time. And it, it sounded very, very extreme. You know, we were like, okay, what are we going to eat? <laughs> to, to try when the meat does not sound right. But it was coming from the from the person that was really having a hard, extremely hard time with, with joint pains. And he said within... He was literally within two weeks able to to feel the significant difference. Uh, Alex started reading more and more about it and listening more about it. And one day he was like, "You know what? I'm I'm ready to pull the plug, you know, and 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 try it." At the same time, we were becoming uh, empty nesters, and 
we literally drop off the, the second kid to school and came home and said, tomorrow we are starting with, with carnivore because we believed it was easier if we both doing it. So, wow. um, and, and that's how it started. So, so the okay. transition was not that hard because we already removed so much of, of, of foods, addictive foods. So, but it, it it was it was still a challenge, you know. So it's not it was not the 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 stomach; it was the the brain that wants. Yes, no, uh, because I know sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to implement just because we're so used to a certain way of things, and change isn't easy for a lot of people. So that's incredible that you guys decided to dive in once your kids left the house and. You know, so how, like, how do, do you have any other health issues if you don't mind talking about them? Um, as well? I, did have a, I, I did, I started with that, with the thyroid issues, uh, which turned out to be Hashimoto's. Uh, I was uh -huh. extremely tired. Uh, I had uh, issues with the brain fog. It was very, very hard to work and, and, and focus and stay, stay awake, stay focused. Um, and then I also develop a gout uh, in my toe and I develop uh, joint pains in my right hand. So uh, okay. keto uh, resolve, I was, uh, I was very, very uh, disciplined when I, when I went on, a, on, on keto. I was able to reverse Hashimoto's on a keto and uh, with my thyroid in a in a in a good balance, uh, what I was not able to 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 resolve on keto was the the gout, and yeah. uh, the joint the pain in my joints. The pain significantly was reduced in my hand, but it would spike up from time to time. So so I could not figure out why why it's happening. You know the the as I said the diet looked more clean and clean and uh, but still. The, the the joint pain was lingering and with Alex was way more uh complicated when it comes down to yeah I, I I was a mess I mean I had I had gout I had arthritis uh psoriasis Hashimoto's disease uh constant kidney stones IBS shingles tennis elbow uh migraines headaches uh horrible skin you know acne all over my body, yeah. all over my face. Um, I basically lived in a in a back brace. I had constant, you know, back pain, lower sciatica pains. Um, I mean, I was a mess. Um, and um, you know, changing changing diets is it, it's shocking, but most of all that is is gone. You also had a perforated colon. That's right. So that I, was his turning. Oh wow. Yeah. Diverticulitis uh, led me to um, the emergency room one day, and then I ended up with a perforated colon in three places. So that was something that, wow. that yeah, that that hit me pretty hard, and, and opened my eyes to um, looking into trying something different, you know, like diet, because the doctor route just was not working. I was constantly taking different medications and steroids and anti-inflammatories and pills for this and pills, you know what I mean? It was, it was just, uh, it, it was getting out of control. And yeah, temporary little band-aid solutions for just treating your symptoms, but not, not the root cause of, of what, what was really going on with me, you know? Yeah. And, and like my wife was saying, when we were on, on the keto diet, I mean, it did help. Anything other than the American stand, the standard American diet is going to be better, right? Absolutely. But, yeah. When when uh, when I started realizing that my joint pain was getting worse and worse, I told my wife, "I'm like, something's off, you know, with me. I I'm having a hard time getting in and out of the cars. My my hips are starting to hurt. I'm like, I don't know if I need to do a hip replacement. I'm like, something's wrong, you know. So yeah." We we started now, uh, uh, you know, looking into uh, you know, listening to those podcasts, you know, with Joe Rogan, and then we, Dr. Sean Baker, and Ken Berry, and Dr. Saladino. I mean, there there's just a lot of uh, cool things, you know, to explore when when you have uh, uh, real doctors that are actually telling you, hey, there there is another path you can try, you know. 
So yeah, yeah. so yeah, it was life changing. Our, our doctors were not open to to to. To, to trying to change the diet they thought that that's not so uh my yeah. entomologist yeah. asked the doctor when when we asked his doctor because i was two years on a keto prior to to him so when he his colon ruptured that was a aha moment for him so we talked and i was like look at they're not giving you any 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 different approach you know besides the pills obviously it's not working Look at, I was able to reverse Hashimoto. There's something into this and they're still denying it. So, because I asked my doctor uh, for, uh, because she was against it. I asked for an open prescription uh, to do my blood work uh, for a full panel, uh, for full thyroid uh, test every month and every six months. You know, I have a blood work showing the 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 the, the progress, actually the regression of, 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 of yes. Yeah of of my uh my antibody cell so it it proved that it it worked i told her i'm not a doctor i'm just somebody who is willing to to try to to have a completely different approach i'm i'm sick regardless you know so why why not yeah, yeah. no that's amazing yeah and unfortunately i i i i feel like a lot of us come to this way of eating because of things like that because we try to always look for paths of healing within us and sometimes you go to your doctor and it just doesn't work out you know and you try to explain things and they I know sometimes it gets to the point where doctors will tell you it's all in your head don't worry about it you know it's that kind of thing so no I, like I said congratulations on your bravery to jump in everything because I know that some people they really like they're like, no, this is how it should be, how we're supposed to eat. They look at the food pyramid and then that's it, you know? So that's that's really great. So at the moment with your medications, are you off all medications or are you like tapering off at the moment or? No, how is I'm that doing? Off everything. Yep, no more. Yeah, yeah. We all take uh, vitamin D because we live in a, at a Midwest during the winter, we don't practically see the sun, so. I mean, I used to take all kinds of, uh, you know, vitamins and supplements and all that stuff, but it, it just got to the point where I think that was also causing me kidney stones as well. There's no need for it. You have all, all, all the nutrition that you, that you get out of your meat, no, no need for all that stuff. I mean, honestly, they're-, they're Yeah. I'm not doing anything anymore and knock on wood, I'm doing good. Yeah. Now, how did you find, did you have any issues transitioning? Like, um, I know some people do end up having stomach issues. I other did. people have breakouts, things like that. Did yeah, you have it, anything? It was um, for, I'd say for quite a few months, um, diarrhea was was an issue for me. And um, it, it, it took a long time for my stomach to accept that, that you know, that diet change. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that was one thing that was an issue was the, was the diarrhea. <laughs> yeah. But um, it was, uh, yeah, when, once, once things got uh, better and the stomach settled down, I mean, things, things are good. They're good now. Okay. And did and you, Dunya? Um, I have what's called a, a oxalate dumping. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I the probably first four weeks I was feeling extremely hungry. I could eat ridiculous amount of food, but my body just felt that pain in my stomach from being hungry. So so I I was feeding myself as much as my body was was asking. I was not trying to restrict any calories. I was in a good place. I, I believed in a process, you know, so I was not worried. Usually people would say, oh, this much fat, this much protein. It's it, 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 in these amounts are probably going to be too much for you. So, but no, I just followed my body, you know, I listened to my body and, and uh, with the oxalate dumping that, lasted i have excruciating pains in my in my right hand so instead of like getting better actually the the pain was getting way way worse 
And that lasted, I don't know, maybe up to two weeks or uh, 10 days, two weeks. And then after that, the pain was completely gone. And I had no issues with, uh, with any, any joints on my, my hand ever after that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that sounds great. Cause I know that's for me, that's, that's something that happened to me as well, especially with things like my eczema, it got worse for about two weeks and then all of a sudden just cleared up and that was just it. So it's, it's also interesting that we get that. Um, I, I know in my field, we basically call it like a healing crisis. So mm-hmm. it seems like, you know, with some of your things, it just gets worse just before it clears up. So yeah. whenever I know when that happens, I'm always just like, good, it might actually just be working. So it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing with me was uh, I'm, I removed uh, dairy from when, when I started in keto. Dairy just doesn't go too well with me. But when I was transitioning to to, to strict carnivore, uh, yeah, you need, you're looking for some food choices. So, uh, I would have cheese here and there. And I noticed the cheese is definitely making me constipated. So that's not for, for me. And I, I learned that at the beginning and, uh, removed it. So I'm fine. One yeah. other thing that I forgot to mention that, I, that was also a, an issue for me was cramping. Yeah. Cramping. Cramping. Issues with cramps. Um, and believe it or not, uh, you know the way the way I dealt with it was I I would take a a, a spoonful of uh, honey. That was uh-huh. one thing that really helped me. And and you know I I don't know what to tell you. Uh, coffee seemed to be a, a trigger for these cramps for for some reason. The you know I had yeah. to get away from coffee. You know. Um, yeah. It, it it seems like coffee is more like a diuretic, so I guess it's dehydrating me more, or you know, I'm not really sure what it was, but um, yeah. So that, the cramping that 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 was also an issue too. Yeah, for me it was, too, but uh, I did not go for. I I allow my body to try to adjust. So uh, and it did. Uh, I removed coffee for probably uh, a, a good, I don't know, eight, nine months. I wouldn't touch it at all. That seemed to help tremendously. Also, in my case, was was working as a, actually depleting my body from, from water and minerals. Um, uh, but my body is perfectly fine now. I, I, I drink coffee uh, way less than I did before. Uh, mm-hmm. But... Uh, I'm not having issues with the cramps. So my body figured it out how to retain whatever it needs to retain to function well. So okay. So like how how long have you been going now on carnivore? And then also what do you eat? Like primarily what does your diet look like now? We've been carnivore for a year and a half now. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh strict uh um uh, um uh, Generally, we eat. Uh, I think we like to eat beef the most. Uh, if we have a steaks, great. Uh, we he's a hunter, so he got uh, this year a few deer. Yeah, so we venison. had a venison meat. Uh, uh, so whatever we find, we we most mainly shop at Costco. Uh, so we are getting the best prices there. But uh, here and there, there are other stores that have some. Um, uh, sales and i just last week went and bought the different kinds of steaks uh, and not just steaks whatever i can find i mean uh, i personally like it simple uh i eat eggs alex cannot eat eggs actually it's coming out that he cannot uh tolerate costco eggs we were just recently in utah and over there he he tried to eat some eggs and had absolutely no issues so i i don't know if it's probably has to do with something what they feed those animals with and what ends up in, in those eggs. Uh, yeah, we're basically eating, you know, a lot, lot of uh, pork, lamb. I, I love lamb. Lamb seems to really uh, sit with me pretty well. Um, you know, beef, we eat a lot of venison, wild game, you know, pheasants, quail, ducks, uh, wild turkey, um, you know, grouse, woodcock, you know, all that stuff. Um, not much chicken. We don't find it yeah. satisfying. So uh, we go more for for the red meat. So if we compare beef to to pork, pork it's also at the bottom of the of the list. Uh, 
we uh, pork from Costco does not go well with us. It gives us certain kind of a acidy taste or whatever when we buy pork from, for example, from the butcher box. Oh, that pork mm -hmm. is awesome. I mean, we can tell there is such a different um, taste and a quality in a, in a meat. So it's got to it's yeah, got to be from how the animals are being you know raised and what they're yes. being. I think it, you you can tell. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. No, this is this is so great. I'm loving everything that you guys are telling us, especially with the whole healing aspect of it. Yeah. So now you guys are basically fully carnivore. That's amazing. So when when it came to like the Rivera website, did you guys get any um, information from there? Like, how did it help you? Um, me personally, uh, I, I benefited from those social gatherings throughout the day. Uh, we started being carnivore when we were in a pandemic. So that was good. I, I worked from, from home or I, I, I would say I had more time throughout the day, uh, to, 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 to plug in, you know, or in the afternoon, uh, there were, uh, I, I met so many interesting people through those social gatherings you know just listening their stories and their experiences and and in these meetings people are so open so vulnerable you know i mean what they what people go through is just uh amazing you know and to to have a support to have somebody to listen to you i've been in some meetings that i could not help that person but just being there and listening to them you know at least nodding with my head i i I yeah. could tell that it helped. So um, I also benefited uh, a lot from Dr. Uh, Baker and his daily meetings uh, with with VIP guests. So those are always interesting. I, I like the the mixture of people that he's bringing in, you know, from from athletes, from doctors, from farmers, from whoever you know can 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 uh, add to to contributes anyhow so it's nice to be able to go somewhere to uh to listen to other people's you know struggles and um and know that you're not alone you know mm -hmm. um so that's uh it's it, it's nice to know that you know people are willing to to share and uh and help i mean we're all helping one another by by sharing our our, our stories you know so that's um that's 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 a beautiful thing and just uh, with the tips you know you you tried something different you shared and i was like oh my goodness i would never uh i mean that would never cross my mind you know and then you try and 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 it helps so but just uh the, that that great community very extremely supportive community so yeah no it definitely motivates it it's very motivational to be in a community that's the thing so because i also experienced everything that you guys are saying as well being in the community it helps you to keep going forward because i know sometimes people will see um like i like we were saying before like a flare up in their symptoms and then they think oh this is not working it's not working for me and why am I doing this? And then just being on the community really helps just to help you understand that keep pushing forward and then you'll see some, some yeah. amazing results. Oh my goodness. Well, no, thank you so much for your time, guys. It was amazing having you on here. Thanks for yeah, having me. And hearing yeah. your story. Yeah. Yes. Well, I hope to see you again soon and uh, we'll see you on Rivero. Okay, great. Well much elizabeth all right have, have a wonderful day thank, thank you. you you as well all right <laughs>